Remember at the end of this video, that in the description part there are links to find additional information regarding the topic that we are going to expose. In this class number 2 of our beginner chiller course we are going to study the chiller with a water-cooled condenser. On the screen we have a diagram that represents the operation in broad strokes of an ice water plant. As we explained in the previous class, right now we are showing the link that can send you to that class. In that class number 1 we give a general explanation about the operation of an ice water plant. On the left, as he indicated that time, we have the chilled water circuit that goes to the application, primary pump, secondary pump. We then have this circuit connected to the chiller in order to feed the chiller with water and the chiller then takes charge of conditioning the liquid to send it to the application. Now, in that class we showed several times, it was explained on several occasions that the function of the ice water plant is to send the heat that is being extracted from the liquid to the environment. This is how it was said at that time, from left to right, that the heat from the water plant, from the liquid, passed to the chiller evaporator, to the cooler and once it was there in the cooler, the refrigeration circuit through the refrigerant was was responsible for taking that heat to the chiller condenser. That heat, at that moment we explained in class number one, was, let's say that way, it was collected, it was sucked, so to speak, by the refrigerant through its evaporation. The refrigerant is in the chiller evaporator and since it has a low temperature, due to the low pressure that the compressor causes due to the refrigerant suction, as the refrigerant is sucked, the pressure drops and when the pressure drops we then have a low temperature. Then, that low temperature allowed the heat from the ice water to pass into the refrigeration circuit and that heat caused the refrigerant to begin to evaporate. So, we had a phase change, it was explained at that moment that in the evaporator we then had refrigerant in a liquid state entering and refrigerant in a gaseous state, in a vapor state leaving. That refrigerant was subjected to compression by the compressor and was sent to the condenser and in that condenser, which is the part that we are going to show right now that I am pointing out, something quite important for the circuit and fundamental happens in that condenser, because the refrigerant arrives in a state of vapor and we need it to return to its original state, liquid state, we need it to return to the condenser at this point, at that point we need the return of the phase. So, for that, the easiest way to condense a substance is by increasing its pressure. If we increase the pressure, then the substance tends to condense because the molecules that form it are closer together. If we remember the behavior of the substance, as the substances separate, they are in a gaseous state and as they get closer, they begin to go from a liquid state until they reach a solid state. Here we, of course, are not interested in the solid state, but we are interested in letting you know that as the pressure increases it is like the molecules are closer together and when they are closer together it will be easier to condense them. In that case, condensation is going from the vapor state to the liquid state. Then, once the compression is done, we pass it through the condenser and in the condenser with high pressure and a cooling that the refrigerant undergoes, at that point, a small cooling quickly, then the passage of vapor to liquid. So, one agrees on something, that the condenser requires two fundamental things, high pressure and also requires cooling. In class number one, we showed that the condenser that the chiller had at that time, that condenser that the chiller had at that time was cooled by fans. So we were talking about an air-cooled chiller. That chiller that has a fan in its condenser is called an air-cooled chiller. In this class number two of our chiller course for beginners, the chiller course for beginners, we are going to show a condenser cooled not by air but by water. If you want to acquire more advanced knowledge about chillers and industrial refrigeration plants, you can visit mundochiller.com and take our private programs for the training of professionals in the sector. Every month we are opening courses with new groups. Online modality. Which is precisely the scheme that we are showing on the screen. Note that we are going to have an additional water circuit, so now we are going to have three circuits. If we look from left to right, we will first have the frozen water circuit that brings the water to the lowest temperature. Then in the middle we will have the refrigeration circuit and then to the right of your screen we will have the condenser cooling circuit. Now we are not going to cool with air, we are going to cool with water, but this flow of water has nothing to do, pay attention, it has nothing to do with ice water. It is an independent flow. The pipes are not connected at any point at all. They are flows that have nothing to do with it. In fact, neither are their temperatures. So this circuit that we have to the right of water that we are going to manage to cool the condenser exclusively. This flow of water does not have to have low temperatures, 
but simply containing the temperature of the environment is enough to cool the condenser because the condenser is at a temperature above the environment. So by having the ambient temperature of this water circuit we are going to achieve cooling. This water circuit is a water circuit at room temperature and in order to achieve cooling we are going to need a pump that we are going to call a condensation pump. I am showing the condensation pump. That condensation pump will then be in charge of sending water to the chiller condenser and collecting the heat from the refrigerant. What this new circuit does is collect heat in the refrigerant condenser. Pick it up and send it through your system to a point that we're going to call a new part of this system. Let's call it a cooling tower. In the cooling tower the water arrives with the heat that it has collected in the condenser and at that moment the water reaches the cooling tower and we are going to cool it with fans. We are going to have another heat exchange process now between the water and the environment. What is the advantage of this type of cooling? The main advantage of this type of chiller condenser cooling is that the water will always have the wet temperature while the air will always have the dry temperature. This means that we are going to have, despite the fact that water and air are in the environment, the water is going to have a lower temperature than the air. Sure, it will depend on the relative humidity, but it will have a lower average temperature. This will guarantee a better heat exchange in the condenser. Then it will guarantee that we are going to extract the heat more easily. Therefore we are going to have a more comfortable, calmer refrigeration circuit to remove the heat that has been collected from the frozen water. What happens is that we cannot use this type of system all the time because, logically, we need an additional source of water, which will be water from the environment. Why are we going to need an additional water circuit? Because the problem with the cooling tower, not the problem but the way it works, is that there is going to be a quantity of water that evaporates as a result of the cooling in the cooling tower. We have to be constantly replacing. Note that there is a difference with frozen water because frozen water is a totally closed circuit and does not need replacement, practically except for any leaks that may exist. So we are just going to replace the small leaks that should not be minimal, but there are possibilities with a leak in the chilled water circuit. Of the rest there is no evaporation because the water at no time changes phase, the water at no time will change phase. So we in the chilled water circuit are not going to have problems with being in a constant replacement of high flows, perhaps what happens due to losses. But in the environmental water circuit. If you want to acquire more advanced knowledge about chillers and industrial refrigeration plants, you can visit mundochiller.com and take our private programs for the training of professionals in the sector. Every month we are opening courses with new groups, online modality. But in the environmental water circuit we are going to have a constant replacement because there is going to be a process that occurs in the cooling tower. It is a process that is open to the environment and there is a considerable percentage of water that begins to evaporate. It evaporates and then, then this flow of water must be replaced. So that's why when we talk about a circuit of a chilled water plant with a water cooled chiller. We need to have a reliable and constant water source because we are going to have to constantly inject a new flow of water here at this point in this circuit. So it is important to mention what advantages this system has. It has the main advantage that it is easier to remove the heat in the condenser. And what benefit does the fact that it is easier to take out the heat in the condenser brings us? Well, the main benefit that it brings us is that since it is easier to remove the heat, then the electrical consumption in this refrigeration circuit will be lower. The electricity consumption will be lower because we will not need such high pressures. We are going to have slightly lower pressures in this circuit. If we have slightly lower pressures in this refrigeration circuit, if we have slightly lower pressures, we will have a lower consumption of the compressor. And if we have a lower consumption of the compressor, we will have a lower electrical consumption of the chilled water plant. And that is going to be visualized, it is going to be projected, it is going to be seen in the consumption of the entire plant. Because let's remember that the electrical consumption of a compressor is generally high. So if we manage to lower that consumption, then we are going to improve the coefficient of performance of the chilled water plant that we are going to see in later classes. So this water circuit has an environmental penalty, let's say, because we are evaporating, sending water into the environment but it has the benefit or compensation that we are going to have an improvement in the electrical consumption of the installation. So in this second class of our basic chiller course for beginners. 
If you want to acquire more advanced knowledge about chillers and industrial refrigeration plants, you can visit mundochiller.com and take our private programs for the training of professionals in the sector. Every month we are opening courses with new groups. Online Modality In this class we aim to show that there are chillers whose condensers are cooled by water. Where we are going to have then three circuits of two totally different circuits that it is worth mentioning that they never communicate. There is thermal communication because there are exchanges but not communication between the fluids. The fluids will never mix and we will now have an ice water circuit on the left. A refrigeration circuit in the center according to the scheme we have and an ambient water circuit on the right that is going to be in charge of cooling the condenser. With a new component that will be the cooling tower and we will also have a pump to handle this water circuit at room temperature. This centrifugal pump that will also provide us with the flow of water in the condenser that we will constantly need to remove the water. So the heat now goes from the water to the refrigerant in the cooler and from the refrigerant it carries that heat to the condenser. In the condenser, the refrigerant delivers heat to the water at room temperature. The ambient temperature water goes to the cooling tower and delivers the ambient heat to the air in the cooling tower through the passage of air. In later classes of our beginner chiller course we will see more details about this installation. Esta instalación.